Let me show you another tutorial on .NET Core Debugging. This time, analyzing a dump to find a memory leak. Okay, so technically, you can't have a memory leak in a .NET Core application with plain vanilla c -sharp objects because they run on a garbage collector. However, if you have objects in memory that are living far longer than they should, they could occupy memory. So I'm going to try to analyze those objects in a memory dump as though they are a memory leak. Of course, they are not actually leaking, but what I'm going to analyze is that the garbage collector thinks that these objects are alive. This is a good premise to introduce two tools to analyze the memory dump. The first is the tool .NET GC dump to capture the dump and the second tool is the tool perfview to analyze the dump. Let me switch to my remote computer so that we can run the commands to install .NET GC dump and subsequently run perfview. What I have here open is a copy of Visual Studio code uh, in which I have some C sharp code and a PowerShell window. To install the .NET GC dump tool, all you need to do is run the command .NET tool install global .NET GC dump. I chose to install it global because I'm going to run this command many times, but you don't have to install it global. I recommend installing it global. So if I press enter, I get that the tool is already installed. The first time you run this command, it's going to download the tool and it's going to install it. So you will get the line saying that a certain version has been installed. I am not sure whether you need to be an administrator to install the tool. So if it says that you need to be an administrator, go ahead, open an administrator PowerShell window. If not, you should get the tool, uh, the message saying either that the tool is already installed or it has downloaded and installed a version. To aid in the debugging, uh, what I've done is I've written a C sharp program. All my program does is create a whole bunch of objects called my class which is meant to illustrate that it is wasting memory. My class, the object my class, all it does is create a buffer of bytes, which is just excessively large and it does nothing more. All I want to do is find this buffer in the memory dump to prove that the tools work. So let me run the application. So I'm just going to run it with .NET run. What this program is going to do, it's going to wait for me to press enter and then it's going to create a whole bunch of objects to waste memory. At this time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to capture a memory dump. This is going to be my before dump. And then afterwards, I'm going to capture a second memory dump, which is going to be my after dump. And I'm going to use the tool perfview to actually diff so that I can see the difference between the two dumps. So let's go ahead and capture the first memory dump. I will leave a link in the description below where to get the perfview tool and also show a bit of description of how I downloaded the tool when I reached to the point of using perfview. But for now, let's capture the memory dump. Okay, so let's use another PowerShell window. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run .NET GC dump PS. What this command does is that it looks at all the processes that are running, which are .NET Core and it will show the process ID that I need in order to capture the memory dump. So the name of my program is my app over here. And so I can see that the process ID is 37576. Capturing the dump is basically just running .NET GC dump collect minus P. We put in the uh, ID. So it's 37576 minus O. O is output. And I'm just going to put the word before. That will capture the memory dump into a file called before.gc dump. Okay, now let's waste some memory. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to press enter in my program. What my program does is when I press enter after the read line, it's just going to waste a whole blob of memory and wait for me to press enter to exit. At this point, I can capture my after memory dump. Capturing the after memory dump, well, that's the same as the before, but this time I'm just going to name the dump after. So this memory dump, I can see that it's already larger than the previous memory dump. So there's more objects inside. We will analyze this memory dump using the perfview tool. The perfview tool is located on GitHub at this location over here, which is uh, GitHub Microsoft perfview. Microsoft wrote this tool to do memory analysis. And one of the features that it has is that it can actually analyze memory dumps. 
in this uh, source code, you can download the source code and you can build it. I recommend just going to the uh, download page and just downloading a version of Perfview from the uh, releases over here. I will leave um, all these links in the uh, description below. Um, you can just get a copy of it. I'm just using the executable. I did not bother to download, uh, like I did not download a NuGet version or install it. Uh, just grab the exe and use it and you can get Perfview. Let me switch to my computer that has Perfview. So when you start Perfview, you'll get a screen that kind of looks like this. This is like the introduction screen. What you want to do is you want to enter the directory where the dumps are located into this drop down over here. I've already done so over here and you'll get a list of all the folders and the files. And what you want to see is you want to see the memory dumps being uh, displayed in this tree over here. Kind of easy to use if you if you put the link over here. I believe you can actually just open the dump by going here and saying collect or open. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to skip all that. I'm just going to use it directly from here. Now, generally, you can use WinDebug to open the memory dump and analyze it. The problem is that in WinDebug, if we dump the heap in WinDebug, we don't have a quick way of making a delta between a before and after. We can kind of do it with a lot of scripting. But what Perfview does is it has tools built into it to actually analyze on our behalf so that we don't have to really try to figure out what the difference between two memory dumps are. So I'm going to show a technique with Perfview and then maybe in a future video, I'll try the same technique in WinDebug itself. I would recommend using Perfview. If Perfview doesn't work, try WinDebug, but try Perfview first. Now within Perfview, there is the capability of generating memory dumps. I'll do a video dedicated to Perfview in the future because it's a bit more complicated and I would like to use Perfview to do analysis of performance as well. So for this video, we're going to just stick to opening the memory dump. But technically, I can actually go here and I can say collect a dump and put in more information to collect just say performance tokens or performance monitoring. Uh, that's a bit more advanced, so I'm going to keep that for a future video. We start off the analysis by double clicking the before dump. We get the heap stacks. That's the only piece of information that we need. Now, if I double click on the heap stacks, I get another instance of perf view and it will show me a breakdown of the heap. This is basically the same thing you get when you do dump heap in WinDebug, except that in this list, it's a bit more detailed. There's a bit more information. There is information about the references and there is a flame graph that can actually show the breakdown of objects. I am going to skip most of this because what I want to do is I want to create a delta so that I have an easier list to work with. To create the delta, what I do is I go back to Perfview, I double click the after GC dump and I double click the heap stacks. Now what I have is I have the before over here, I have the after over here and when I have both the windows open, I get a diff menu over here where I can say create the delta. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to click create the delta and then I get a, another instance of Perfview. But this instance only contains the difference of the other two instances. Let's take a look at the breakdown. If I look at the list, I see that it is already sorted from largest on the top to smallest at the bottom. I'm not going to bother with the bottom of the list. It probably goes down quite a bit of objects which are really small. I'm, I'm just going to look at the top. What I want to see is I want to see the largest objects that exist and I can deduce from there what's wasting the memory. If I click on the flame graph, I get a breakdown that says that the largest object is this object over here, which is in uh, diagnostic. This is because when I run the tools to capture the dump, it has to load some libraries into the application. That is the diagnostic libraries. So I'm going to ignore diagnostic libraries because they're large, but they are not indicative of a memory problem. So ignoring the diagnostic libraries, the next one on the list is my app, my class. This is the object I wrote to intentionally waste memory. If I double click on the object, it's going to break it down even more and it's going to show more information about that object in the reference from. This can kind of tell me how large the object is, but let's break it down even more to see the children of the object. If I click on the local variables of my class and I click to ref from ref2, I can see that the object my class is mostly made up of the local variables. 
Now, it is possible to actually get the name of the local variables if I take a full memory dump and I put all the symbols. I'll do that in a future video because it is a bit more involved. But at this point, because I have the flame graph, I can actually see that my app, my class is probably occupying the second largest memory slot uh, below the diagnostic and tracing. This gives me a lot of evidence to diagnose further into my app whether this object here is actually wasting the most amount of memory. Now, at this point, because I have already identified that uh, my app, my class is occupying a lot of memory, we could use WinDebug to diagnose further into this object and we could find all the roots. Like in this case, if I click for the roots of my class, I get that there is no actual root. It is the on the main level itself. So it gives a lot of evidence that uh, my class is actually the cause of the uh, leaks. We can use this evidence to diagnose further, but I like to use Perfview because it gives me the delta. That's the strength of this tool. Getting the delta means I optimize my work and I don't have to really figure it out from within the dump heap. As an introduction to Perfview, I think just using it this way is probably good enough. There are other features of Perfview which are very good. Like for example, there are all these filters over here in which you can filter the memory to make it uh, even shorter. You can even change the way it's reporting the, um, the module. You can change it to other kind of uh, techniques where it will filter in different ways. I think all these filters need its own video. They are pretty involved in what they can do. So I'll try to make another video dedicated to just the filters in Perfview. But I think uh, for now, just having this list over here already illustrates how to use Perfview with memory dumps. There are quite a number of tools that I would like to cover for .NET Core. Some of them that do supplement Perfview like trace views. Um, I will do that in a future video as well because there's way too many tools to use in the uh, beginning. But I do use uh, Perfview with .NET Core because it just makes my life easier rather than looking at dump heaps all the time. Have you used uh, Perfview or .NET GC dump before? I use it all the time because it's just much easier than doing that rather than trying to get WinDebug onto the target machine all the time. Once I get the data from Perfview, I tend to use WinDebug to corroborate. Like for example, I'll use dump heap and GC root in WinDebug to corroborate what I found in Perfview. But I definitely use Perfview as the first tool in order to get the delta of memory so that op that optimizes my searching in WinDebug. Let me know in the comments below if you have used Perfview before. And a gentle reminder to subscribe and hit that bell icon if you haven't done so already. It helps the channel and it also helps if you give me a like because that really helps the channel. As always, it's been a pleasure bringing you this information. I am High Voice, signing out.